Are you in showing? <laughs> well, today I'm joined by James Armstrong and we're on the banks of Willow Park Fishery. So a big thank you to them for letting us down here. And today's something a little bit different as you've probably seen from the title and the thumbnail, it's going to be including a deeper, but it's also including the good old trusty lead and braid, which is the comment section's favorite answer to anyone using the deeper saying that I can find out just the same amount using this without the use of that. Is it true or is it not? I think there's an element of both, isn't there? Hopefully that's what we're going to find out today. Yeah, I, I do both, mate. I, I incorporate the deeper into some stuff and um, I trust my judgment with my lead as well. So yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is going to be a bit of both as well because I'm going to be trusting my judgment with the use of the lead. I'm going to cast about with the lead in a couple of different swims, see what I think I'm fishing over, I would be fishing over. And then we're going to put the deeper out and see how close I was, how far out I was. And then we'll sort of come back here, weigh up the pros and cons yeah. of each and, and see where we come out. Sounds good. I'm expecting big things, mate. You should be spot on. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but you've got to get off though, I'm afraid. <laughs> Okay, so starting off with the old school basic, the YouTube comment section's reply to anyone using the deeper is just, I can know or find exactly the same with using just a bare lead. So we're going to put that to the test. I'm going to use exactly the same rod and reel setup that James is going to use in a second. But of course, at the end, I've just got a four and a half ounce lead. Now I have just pub chucked it, put it on a clip and brought it back in. So I don't have any idea what's out there. And I still don't really know much. That, well, to start with, I'm just going to say that feels extremely shallow. So the fact that I could barely get a drop suggests that as soon as I hit the water, it's virtually on the bottom. So I didn't really feel much. So I'd guess that to be around three, four foot in depth. Pulling it back. A little bit of gravel, and then it sticks every now and then. That feels like I'm coming into a bit of like a silt patch, maybe a little patch of weed. Again, it's got a bit more sludgy and it's just pulled through of that and gone solid again, as you can see. So that's suggesting to me that I did go a little bit of a clearer patch, but now it's a bit more weedy. Ah, there we go. Now I feel like I found a bit of gravel. That just skipped across a bit and now it's gone solid again. So very hit and miss. It feels like little clumps of low-lying weed and then the odd little gravelly patch. Again, I just felt it skip a little bit then. So I'm getting a bit of information back. There, it just feels a bit more gravelly. But the only thing that I'm going to say is that I don't know exactly where that lead is right now. Other than clipping up and casting out again, I don't know exactly where that lead is right now. Whereas I'm sure that when James uses the deeper, you'll be able to see exactly where it is. There, it just skipped a bit more. But I'm not getting a hell of a lot. So I'm just going to have one more quick cast back to that patch and it feels like I have picked up some weed yeah so I was right to an extent let's have a look what I've just picked up some low lying I'm terrible with my weed names is that silkweed it's like silkweed so really th he broke off really easy so it's still you could probably fish in there with a solid bag or whatever but it's good to know that that's what in front of me I'm just gonna have another quick cast again see if I get much the same then I'm going to hand over to James, using the deeper. See if I get a drop this time. No, see, I'm not feeling a drop. So that's just suggesting to me that it's very shallow. And it's plugged a little bit. So yeah, I think I'm landing in a bit of a weedy area then. Coming back. Much the same. Of course, for me to really map out this swim, I'm going to have to do it several times and, and fan my cast around. I guess you'd have to do the same with the deeper, but that's my findings, is it's shallow, low-lying weed with a few little gravelly patches every now and then, which you could present a bait on, no problem, I think. That feels a bit cleaner there. So that's the information I'm getting through. A lead, braid, and a marker rod in this spot. So let's bring that in. James, you want to come on down with your setup and see exactly what you find? Right, so gear wise for incorporating the Deeper Pro, I've basically got a, uh, this is a very powerful Daiwa Infinity rod, three and three quarters. I actually use this rod for a lot of my marker float work. So it's not a dedicated spawn rod, but it is a very, very powerful one. It's a 13 foot. I prefer 13 foot. I feel like you can get more power. You can cast further with a 13 foot rod and all my fishing rods 
are the same when I'm using it. The reel is just a, a Dyer Emblem spod reel, just a, a large cranking power, big pit reel really, and that is loaded up with braid. You'll notice that actually on the rod itself, I have got one of the deeper mounts. Now, this may look flimsy, but actually it is not coming off there. It's extremely secure and it does allow you to cast and have your phone on at the same time. And obviously you don't need to be holding your phone separately when you're reading the lake bed. So you've just seen Joe casting out there and identifying what's on the lake bed. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, hit the same clip and see what the deeper tells you. And then we'll discuss our findings. Right. Shall I cast out there, mate? Yeah, I'm hoping I'm at least somewhat close to right. <laughs> I think you are, mate. I I've said around are. three, four foot with low-lying silkweed. Okay. I with think you're pretty close. a few gravelly patches around it. And a tree? All right. So it was straight at that tree straight, on the horizon, Pretty much straight it? towards that grebe. Yeah. Right. Okay, we've hit the clip. Well, I'm hoping that should say about three and a half, four it feet. It is, mate. Yeah, it's actually saying four feet on the deeper. As you can just see there. Okay, look. So I was pretty bang on. You were. And what I'm getting so far, Joe, is there's actually a slight raise there, but it's showing low-lying weed. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have said I felt a raise, but maybe is that referencing the fact that they've came over a bit of a weed bed there maybe no, there's a there's an ever so slight raise in the bottom there you can see it's gone up okay. like half a foot which obviously when you're pulling a lead back you're not going to notice all that yeah. easily now i did say it felt like i came through a bit of weed and then i get a clearer patch yeah and is there any sort of clearer areas it's, it's showing sort of sparser weed um but no real sort of polished gravel areas as such but definitely lower lying weed so now nearly, there you go, nearly three foot three and a half foot yeah it's just coming through sort of a slightly clearer patch yeah. but when you're pulling back i think actually at times the lead is probably sort of through the weed yeah, and into it. the gravel yeah. behind it you're thinking oh that is quite clear and actually you're probably just through the thin layer yeah. of weed and that's when you'd re-clip up cast again Yes. check whereas this obviously you're doing this in one i can see that whole time there's low lying weed yeah whereas exactly. at times it felt like i was hitting what was stood on like a gravelly yeah fairly smooth bond definitely interesting mate. at least i got the depth right you got the depth <laughs> bang on mate no your findings were, were pretty bang on at the end of the day wherever you were casting out there and pulling back you would be presented yeah um you know you're not casting into really thick weed but Obviously the beauty of this, mate, I've had one pull through there and I've learned pretty much the, the, the whole of the lake bed on that pull yeah. through. Um, I think you'd be a lot more inclined to cast more with a lead. Well, that's what I said towards the end of mine. If I was gonna map out the whole area, I'd have to fan around with multiple casts, yeah. tip up a certain area and do it again. Exactly. The, well, the, I'll tell you what, we, we've done one example. I reckon if we shoot around to another swim, do yeah. exactly the same Yep. and see what our findings are there as well. Cool, sounds good. So we're now into another bay, completely opposite end of the lake. I'm going to do exactly the same test just to see what our findings are. So flicking over to the far bank. Very shallow, but that's to be expected. I'm right on the far bank and the water level is really down at the moment. In fact, I might just clip that up for James. There we go. So again, I'm only thinking that's a couple of foot. The deeper may even struggle to work that close to the bank, but bringing it back really gravelly there. And now I've just hit a bit of weed. Yeah, it's kind of, it's smooth, but there's resistance, which suggests I've got a bit of weed on the lead or it's low lying weed, but nothing that's getting clogged in. Again, it's just skipping along. And if I just sort of lift the lead and drop, yeah, no drop. Lift the lead and drop. So I've got a bit more of a donk there. I'm kind of in the middle now of between me and the far bank, bringing it back. That feels cleaner, but still feels like there's some kind of low lying weed there. Not like I'm finding a nice gravel patch and just skipping along or donking. Definitely feels like there's something on the bottom. 
So much the same, I'd say it's still very shallow over here. I would still guess it around the three to four foot mark, but a bit of weed and bringing this in, not really anything on, a bit of silt and uh, really dark weed instead this time, a bit more of the blanket weed. So rather than the silk weed I had in the other swim, a bit more uh, blanket weed, just check my clips fine, he's not gonna lose his deeper in the far tree. Yeah, so really shallow. But very clear where that lands. And then I'm pulling into that silk weed or blanket weed, like I was saying. Okay, I'll try and check the depth there. Oh, that skipped a bit more, but I don't know if that was cutting through the weed. Yes, yeah, definitely very shallow. And almost like I'm coming back up something. Bit more of a drop there. I'm nearly back in now. But yeah, so my findings with just the lead is again, shallow. I'd say deepest four, shallowest probably on the far bank already, only about two. And it's a low lying blanket weed, maybe some silk weed in patches and not as many clear areas as I felt in the other swim. It's very regimented, smooth, but resistance. So that's what I think is in this swim. Over to you. What you said out there? I reckon where it lands is probably only about two foot. Yeah. And then it comes down to deepest four. Okay. And it's more silty, like low lying uh, blanket weed okay. with a bit of silk weed every now and then. There we go. But not really many clear patches. Right, how accurate am I this time? Let's have a look, mate. I reckon it's about two foot there. I'm way out. Yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half foot. Okay, so it's deeper there than I thought. It's actually sloping off into four and a half. I said deepest of four. 4.95, 5.2, oh mate, look, 5.3, 5.5. So it's already a foot and a half deeper than I thought, yeah. and they've only just come out from the margin. So there's a big drop off there, mate. You were bang on on the, the, the sort of the topography. Well, it's actually down it? to six foot nearly. But you were bang on on the topography, as in there's bits of weed yeah, there. Yeah, I did feel like weed. it came down a little bit, but I guessed I landed on two foot and dropped down to four. I'm two foot out, basically, or three foot. Yeah, which in you know, which in terms of on a shallow lake like this is is quite a lot, yeah. isn't it? You know, that could make the difference a little drop off like that. No, I didn't seem to feel like there was any standout clear patch on it. It was all no, low lying. And that's that exactly what this much. is showing. Yeah. Real low lying weed, probably silk weed. Nearly six foot there as well. But it just shows you that, that they're only small strands, you know, yeah. they might be like inches off the bottom. There's actually a tiny little drop off there. But again, mate, you were pretty accurate with. Just my depth. And that's the thing yeah, that you can't really get with a lead. Is I, and I kept on sort of pulling the lead up and dropping yeah. it. I could feel it was skipping across some bits, but I feel again like that could have been cutting through the weed. But yeah. that looks clearer than it did in the first bay. Yeah, it does. And I thought this felt grubbier. I think the, um, obviously the big, big thing with feeling the lead down, um, you know when it's shallow and you know when it's deep. Yeah. But that sort of in between when there's only like two or three feet Yeah, variation. which is probably why I thought that far margin was so shallow because yeah. I didn't get a drop, both casts. So I just, just assumed it's shallow. Mate, also. This is like a herd of carp coming through on our <laughs> left there. See them just under the surface, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, anyway, yeah, so I think you were pretty accurate, mate, other than the, the slight variation depth. in depth. But if that was five foot down to 12 foot, you would, you, I would yeah. hope you would know the difference with a mm -hmm. drop, wouldn't you? But um, yeah, on the, the deeper shows those sort of tiny little details, yeah. really. So on the whole, I was pretty much there, yeah, just the depths were out. Mate, wouldn't you? Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Right, let's go recap, summarize. Sounds good. You come in. Were you flopping, flopping there? You're flopping there and having a belly rub. For those of you at home, that was the dog's belly I was rubbing, not Luke. Luke's not here. So, test complete, and I was pretty good on the first swim. You were? And yeah. surprisingly close enough in the second swim, but I was just completely out on the depths. Yeah. Where are you going, dog? <laughs> they say you? never work with animals and children. <laughs> You're working with both right now. <laughs> but yeah, so. For this situation, this lake, these swims, you probably would be able to get away with a lead, but there's obviously going to be occasions where I feel that, that would definitely 
have the edge over a lead. Yeah. And also sometimes where a lead would probably have the edge over a deeper. Absolutely, yeah. So when and where would you use each in your own fishing? Well, obviously the, the beauty of the deeper is its ability to find very small spots without too much effort, really. Um, I fish a lot of weedy lakes and on those weedy lakes, when you're using a bare lead, obviously you're going to be casting time and time again, going into those weed beds. Mm -hmm. And quite often you can't even pull it back. So you'll find yourselves casting into the weed bed, thinking, oh, I'm in weed here. And you'll just be reeling in a load of weed yeah. rather than, you can't always bounce that lead out, you know, and fill mm -hmm. the spot. So you might have 10 casts until you find any kind of drop. Whereas obviously with the deeper, you're not actually penetrating through the water, yeah. it's reading below it. So the deeper's not gonna get stuck in the weed. You'll be able to pull it across and hopefully find that little clearing pretty quickly. Yeah, and I think with this one, I thought it felt murky or uh, more grubby on the bottom with weed and things than in the other swim. Yeah. But the deeper was suggesting the opposite, but whether it's because I plugged the lead on the first cast with a bit more weed. Possibly. That stayed on the lead and felt like a constant resistance. Yeah. It was giving me a false reading yeah. back because I was feeling weed, but it was only because it was stuck around the lead. Yeah, Whereas that's right with the deeper it was showing it's pretty clear in the yeah, middle it was, yeah. which i wasn't expecting yeah and going back to whole finding spots with the deeper mm. and then being quicker and more efficient than the lead you mm. would then essentially switch over to a lead to fine tune absolutely yeah. there's no point in saying this will find your spot and then great put your rig on and cast out no, you still want to fine tune. no I, I still like to use an element of human <laughs> yeah. human skill as well obviously but I'll, I'll initially use the deeper to find that clear spot clip up and then use a lead to ultimately feel down and really fine tune my knowledge of the spot really. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, sim simple as that. I mean, I think what one thing that, that, that we both were pretty clear on is that you bumping the lead across the bottom, you knew that it was going to be presentable. You yeah. weren't in any thick weed beds. Obviously the deeper confirmed that as well. Mm -hmm. So you were presented pretty much everywhere, weren't you? Yeah. Out there? And you did confirm that. Yeah, and with the depth thing, obviously you, I could, find out the depths if I've attached a marker flow, but then that's still pulling it back, popping it up. It's it disturbing, back, isn't it? It's disturbing, it takes yeah. time. Yeah, it is. So, although and the line I, goes through the water, as the, the lead goes through the water. Yeah. Whereas obviously the deeper just sits on the surface and maybe not so much on this shallow lake, but in deeper lakes, that's probably quite a big thing. The fact that the lead isn't uh, uh, caning through the water and potentially spooking fish yeah. below it or, or, or going through them. Whereas the deeper sits on the top and, um, it's minimal disturbance, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and the fact I was two foot out of depth here shows that if I was trying to guesstimate a depth in a much deeper lake, I could be 10, 12 foot out. Where is, and yeah. that could be the difference between catching a fish on a shelf or yeah. if they're up in there on a zig. Yeah, yeah. And not, if you had a deep and you could tell the actual depth, yeah. then adjust accordingly. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, you just mentioned that. It's, that's quite a big thing, I think. If you're... If you're trying to locate big humps and stuff on the bottom, obviously with a marker float, you're having to pull it back every few feet, pop it back up, every few feet, pop it back up. Yeah. And you might have missed it in that time. Whereas pulling a deeper back, it'll obviously scan that whole area as you're pulling it back, showing those big sort of troughs or, or um, yeah, or depressions in the lake bed. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a lead and a marker, it'll take you a lot, lot longer, won't it? It um, would indeed. So yeah, the massive advantages to using it and yeah, if you use it properly, it, it can help. So I think we haven't really come up with a full conclusion. There's benefits no. to both. There's negatives yeah. to both. Of course. I think the crux of it is use both in your angling. Yeah. If you've got one, great. If not, you can use a lead, but you're still missing out on things. So we haven't answered the, the debate that's probably going to continue <laughs> no. for many years yeah, to come well, on technology and fishing. Some will love them, some won't. Some will love just using the lead, but um, you've just got to do what, what you're confident in, really. I Definitely. think well, that's the main thing. So comment below, what's your preferred method? Do you use a deeper or do you use a lead?